Hello, tango dancers. One of my favorite lectures to give to tango dancers is about the gait cycle. The gait cycle we have in normal life and the gait cycle that we have for tango. I'm sure you've heard the term your tango walk. For followers, it's primarily walking backwards. For leaders, primarily forwards. But both roles, either leader and follower, can go either direction, right? Usually the hardest steps to master is not the backward stepping, it's the forward step, especially for the followers since we do so much stepping in the other direction. The other challenging thing for followers is that we wear a heel sometimes. You don't have to wear a heel, but if you are wearing a tango heel, that decreases the surface area of your foot on the ground by a lot. It also changes the biomechanics of gait. So I'm gonna just focus on the very first part of the gait cycle on the stance side. That means the standing side, and that is heel strike. The heel should strike the floor with normal gait. My heel comes down first with every step. In tango, toe ball heel leading backward. And that's a normal everyday walking. You had a, a kid and in school do these things, they would automatically work walk heel toe. I would challenge you to take steps forward, toe heel, toe heel, toe heel, toe heel, in a large room for, let's see, a time to last, what, 10 minutes to 20 minutes? For 10 minutes, toe heel, toe heel, and see how your foot and your legs feel after that. I bet you a lot of you will start to develop pain in your metatarsal heads and the ball of your foot, and maybe even some anterior knee pain. If you always lead, walking forward with the ball of your foot first or foot flat, you're setting yourself up for pain and problems physically. As a physical therapist, I'm speaking to all the people that I've heard complaining about foot pain at a milonga. How many times have you heard, my feet are killing me, I have to stop. Especially followers are like, oh, I can't wear these shoes anymore and they're in a four inch heel. Well, if you're at a tango marathon and you want to dance as much as possible, why are you starting in a four inch heel? Why don't you go to a three inch or even a two inch heel if you want to dance for a longer period of time and not hurt your foot so badly? The shorter the heel, the smaller the heel, the more easily you can articulate through the foot. When you have a higher heel, it pushes the weight over the ball of the foot. Even if your heel is in contact with the ground, you're changing your biomechanics once you put the heels on. So just become aware of that to start. And if you're having pain when you're dancing, um, especially I hear men complain, uh, or leads complain of plantar fasciitis all the time. If you've watched any of my video analysis of uh, tango p uh, couples at a milonga, a lot of leaders are sliding around. There's no articulation of the foot. Okay, so this lecture is gonna focus on heel strike. Normal dorsiflexion of the foot that's bringing your toes up towards your body is 10 to 12 degrees. That means that your Achilles, your calf muscles are um, a proper flexibility within normal range. If you have less than that, if you can't bring your foot up very far, you might wanna do some stretches. I have some videos with that, so take a look um, in order to increase the elasticity. For gait, we don't need that much. It would look awkward and it would feel awkward if I were to maximally flex up my foot with each footfall. So about three, maybe five degrees, depending upon the step length is normal. So if I'm taking small steps, that's like one to two degrees of dorsiflexion. And I'll show this close up as well. Small steps require less dorsiflexion. For simplicity, I'm gonna call this flexion of the foot, toes coming up, and pointing the foot going down. Physical therapy terms are dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. But to simplify, we'll just say flex the foot, point the foot. So if I'm walking normally, and I'm taking smaller steps, even in tango, I'm gonna have very little dorsiflexion. If I'm taking a large step, okay, whether it's as a normal person or in tango, in tango, the big difference is the body moves with that foot coming forward. The foot never leads the body, right? So with a larger step, I have a little bit more movement into dorsiflexion. The hard part is adjusting that amount of flexion for the size of heel you have. 
And if you have ever switched out shoes during a malanga for something high to something low, you should feel like, oh, this feels different. I'm having to adjust my dance because you should be adjusting the biomechanics of your dance as you switch heels. So it's important to practice that. So I want you to try to take a few steps forward, barely lifting your toes, barely flexing your foot so that your heel is going down first, but the toes are coming soon after. So I'm not accentuating this. That's gonna cause more harm than good, but I'm just barely getting the heel down first before the toes. I'm articulating heel to toe with a medium step. We did small steps. And then with large steps, I have to push off my back leg more with that. But I want the heel to come down first, even with those larger steps. Now, if you've ever watched performance tango, you will see, especially followers, lead with really high heels. They'll put their forefoot down first. And it's a really pretty line. A lot of them are ballet trained, and this is what they do for show. So remember, what you see with show is for performance. They do maybe um, three songs and they're done. They're not social dancing for hours and hours and hours. If you were to see these people social dancing, most of the time you'll see them getting their heels down because your body, your feet, your legs, your knees cannot withstand the pressure of your ball of your foot hitting the ground for hours on end. So when you use the ball of your foot down first for, um, for followers, that could be in something like Ocho's, I could choose to put the ball of my foot down first. I could also choose to lead with my toe pointed and the last second bring the heel down softly. That's very difficult, but if you practice it, you'll be able to achieve it. What you shouldn't do is exaggerate. This is not about exaggeration. It's about finding that sweet spot of getting your heel down just slightly before the rest of the foot rolls through. So followers, it's not just stepping forward we're talking about. It's forward ochos and molinetes. We take a forward step. Maybe we choose the first forward step to lead toe ball heel. And then if we do the second molinete, heel ball toe. So start becoming aware with which part of your foot is hitting the ground. And if I were to say to practice one more, it's getting the heel down first, especially in heels. With leaders, um, I, when you can um, do steps like a follower has done a molinete, you might do a little check step out of it. Even that little check step, heel ball toe. I'm not accentuating. I am barely getting the heel down first. You could go toe ball heel, but again, you have to be aware how much toe ball heel versus heel ball toe you're using. Most leaders, when you watch performance, the very first step they take forward is a toe ball heel, and then you look at the next step and it's heel to toe. Watch performers, leaders, and take a look at this. Start becoming aware of the articulation through the foot because your feet should be articulating throughout the dance. So what I'm gonna do is demonstrate small step, medium step, big step with a couple different sized heels. I'll close up on these flats first and then do a very small heel and the tallest heel that I can tolerate at the moment so you can have a closer look at what to work on. So small steps first in a pair of flats. Couple of bochos. And it's very slight. The heel is barely coming down first, but I'm also rocking from my forefoot to my rear foot as I dance as well. I'm never just staying in the middle. There's also an articulation of the bottom of the foot flat on the ground. So as I walk forward, I'm transferring the weight to the ball of my foot. As I walk backward, I'm transferring the weight to the ball of the foot to push the other leg back. So small steps, but even if I'm not going anywhere, I'm moving on the standing side on the bottom of the foot. So here are my very short little heels, very, very comfortable to wear for tango. 
I've already decreased the surface area of my foot. I have this tiny little heel instead of a big, flat, wide surface that I had on my other shoe. And the length of my foot is now diminished because I'm up on my forefoot a little bit. So with small steps, I try to find that sweet spot where I'm going through my foot and I'm getting my heel down first, but I'm not exaggerating and I'm not sliding the foot along. It's easy to slide the foot along, but you are gonna end up with a lot of pain from that. So it's kind of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Too little, too much, just right. <laughs> Forward Ochos, we try a few of those for you. Heel, ball, toe, heel, ball, toe, very slightly. And then as I do the turn, I have to lift my heel up, but then the heel comes down before I take the next step. I don't stay up on my forefoot the whole time. That will cause pain. So the general rule is whenever you can, you finish a pivot, heel comes down. I'm exaggerating a little bit so you can see it. Heel comes down. Heel comes down. Okay, don't stay on the forefeet. Now, take a look in larger heels. So this is now a higher heel. Um, are these ridiculously high? No, these are probably a little over three inches, maybe three and a half. Um, this is the highest heel my feet can tolerate being in anymore. And I no longer dance in these shoes because they're too uncomfortable for pivoting. I do much better in a lower heel. But I'm going to demonstrate for you just these steps. So now the surface area of my foot is even more diminished with a higher heel. Um, the length of my foot is shorter. It's not as long because I'm wearing a heel. And um, the, the pedestal um, on the ground for my heel is smaller and a smaller area of the ball of my foot is in contact with the floor with a higher heel. So smaller steps. I see a lot of followers going foot flat when they start wearing a higher heel. So be very careful you're not marching along or sliding along with those shoes. You should be able to articulate heel toe, toe heel. Heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, toe heel, toe heel, toe heel. Trying a couple ochos. See, I'm not used to wearing these heels, so it's hard for me. Heel ball toe. Finding the just right spot. Right there. So I'm loading the heel first, but immediately the forefoot comes down. You don't want to exaggerate any where there's a long lag time between your heel hitting the floor and loading the forefoot. So it's finding that Goldilocks moment, the just right. I feel myself going heel to toe, but it's not exaggerated. So something that we need to practice. If I take a medium step, There we go, that, that one was better. Let me try on the other side. I'm finding that Goldilocks moment right there. And a large step. So I hope in this video you've gotten an appreciation for the importance of heel strike when you step forward in tango for a variation of many steps that we can do in this dance. As a personal story, um, I am a professionally trained ballet dancer. And so when I started tango, I would wear sky high four inch heels and I led or I danced the whole time using a toe heel gait because in ballet, everything is toe ball heel. As you walk, when you run, toe ball heel. I was used to that um, strategy. And so I used that in heels. I could only last an hour or maybe two dancing and my anterior knee would start to hurt. And I thought, oh, I'm getting older and my anterior knees hurt. And then on one of my trips to Buenos Aires, I started training with um, some lovely um, tangueras that started breaking me of that habit and said, no, 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 no. You need to get your heel down first. Don't walk with your toe down first. 
And I remember I started doing that immediately and it was difficult to do, but I got the hang of it while I was in BA for a few weeks. And within a couple of days, my knees didn't hurt anymore. I could dance for hours at a milonga and I no longer had pain. And so it was a revelation because I'm a physical therapist by trade and I know the gait cycle. And so it made total sense to me that why would I change it so much, especially in a pair of heels to walk with my toe first, that's just going to cause some pain and problems in my dance. And when you hurt, you don't dance well. So practice getting those heels down, variety, um, whether you're a leader or follower in flats or high heels. And if you do wear a variety of heel heights, you need to practice walking in each of them.